11.2, compound events. Today, um, our, this is our first lesson, which is actually in the purple eighth grade book. So if you're looking online or you want to follow along with me, you're going to need to have the purple textbook, volume B, and it starts on page 229. This is chapter 11. We don't have chapter 11 in the seventh grade series. It's in the eighth grade series. However, this is seventh grade math. So compound uh, events and probability of compound events. Use a possibility diagram to find the probability of a compound event. Well, we've been doing tree diagrams. Another way to see or to visualize all the possible outcomes of a compound event is that you could use a two-way grid or use a table with columns and rows to show all the total possibilities. So it's called a possibility diagram. Again, it's a picture way of seeing your outcomes. A box contains one green ball and two red balls. A ball is drawn from the box and a fair coin is tossed. So the compound event is tossing a ball and flipping a coin, two events. Find the probability of drawing a red ball and landing on heads. So heads and tails is what you can get on the coin, which you see here in the rows. And in the columns, you see the balls listed here as green or red or red, because there are two red ones, one green and two reds. So you can get a combination of green with heads, red with heads, red with hats, or you can get green with tails, red with tails, red with tails. So there are six total outcomes in this possibility diagram. The probability of getting red in heads, you can see highlighted here in green, is two out of six. And again, we don't have to reduce our probabilities. Two fair eight-sided number die. So they have eight sides on them, not the traditional six sides. Find the probability that the product product, multiplying them, of the two numbers rolled is a multiple of five. So one times one would give me one here. One times two gives me two in this box here. One times three is three, one times four is four, one times five is five, one times six, one times seven, one times eight. Then it's like a times table that you see here. Two times one, two times two, and so on and so forth. So all the products are written in the boxes. Those that are highlighted in green, those that are highlighted in green, and I just erased part of my highlighting, um, are here, are the multiples of five. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 of them. 16 out of a, oh, 15, I'm sorry, I counted one twice, I counted this 25 twice, don't wanna do that. There are 15 of them out of 64 possibilities. There are 64 total boxes in this possibility diagram. 15 of them are multiples of five. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 5, 10, 15, 20, don't count 25 twice. 30, 35, and 40. So the probability of getting a multiple of five 15 60 fourths. A fair four-sided number die. So now the die only has four sides on it. Find the probability that the first number obtained is greater than the second. So you can, and I'm going to fill in the ones that are missing here. A two and a one, well, that's a possibility of having a first number, two, is greater than one. A three and a one, a four and a one. So these three are all possibilities of our answer. We can get a three and a two and a four and a two. Okay, again, first number three is greater than second number two. First number four is greater than second number two. And a four and a three, first number four, is greater than the second number three. So these one, two, three, four, five, six possibilities out of the total of 16 of them. So we have six out of 16 possibilities for our, or that's the probability of getting a first number greater than a second number. I'm not gonna reduce it, so I'm not gonna fill in that second equals. Two fair eight-sided number die are rolled. Find the probability that the sum of the two numbers obtained 
is at most 10. So now we're doing a sum is at most 10. So it cannot be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, or 16. As you can see, those are already filled in in the table. The sum of the numbers. So 1 plus 1 would give me 2. 2 plus 1 gives me 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. 8 plus 7 plus 1 is 8. And 8 plus 1 is 9. So I'm filling in all the sums. So 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 2 is 4. 3 plus 2 is 5, 4 plus 2 is 6, 5 plus 2 is 7, 6 plus 2 is 8, 7 plus 2 is 9, 8 plus 2 is 10. 1 plus 3 is 4, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 3 is 6, 4 plus 3 is 7, 5 plus 3 is 8, 6 plus 3 is 9, 7 plus 3 is 10. Uh, 1 plus 4 is 5, 2 plus 4 is 6, 3 plus 4 is 7, 4 plus 4 is 8, 5 plus 4 is 9, and 6 plus 4 is 10. And 1 plus 5 is 6, 2 plus 5 is 7, 3 plus 5 is 8, 4 plus 5 is 9, 5 plus 5 is 10. 1 plus 6 is 7, 2 plus 6 is 8, 3 plus 6 is 9, and 4 plus 6 is 10. 7 plus 1 is 7, oops, 7 plus 1 is 8, <laughs> 2 plus 7 is 9, 3 plus 7 is 10, and 1 plus 8 is 9, 2 plus 8 is 10. So we filled in 43 of the 64 boxes is a sum that's at most 10, so 10 or smaller. Use a possibility diagram to find each probability. A letter is randomly chosen from the word bell, B-E-L-L, -L, and another letter is chosen from the, randomly from the word beep. So bell and beep. So I'm going to use a um, two-variable uh, columned item to show you how to get this possibility diagram rows and columns. So I have bell and beep. So I have a total of 16 boxes here of all the possibilities. Now one way to draw a probability diagram or a possibility diagram for this is what is the probability that both letters are the same? So I could just put a dot here, B, B, they are the same, or I could put a check mark, or I could put an X. But B, E would not be the same, B, E, B, P. E, B would not be the same, but E, E would be the same. B, and they're doing announcements, so I'll just talk over it. Um, and we have three out of 16 possibilities that are the uh, probability that both letters chosen are the same. In a family, there are three children. Assume that it is equally likely for a child to be a boy or a girl. Draw a tree diagram and use it to find the probability that there are at most two girls in the family. So. There's one out of two chances, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. So you can have boy, 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 girl, boy, girl, boy, boy, girl, 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 boy, boy, girl, 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 boy, girl, 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 boy, and girl, girl, girl. So there are a total of eight outcomes, just like when you flip the three coins that we've seen in a tree diagram before. So the probability that at most two of them are girls. So here's at most two means one is okay. So here's at most two. Here's at most two. One is okay. Here's at most two. Here's at most two. Here's at most two. Here's at most two. But having three girls cannot be one of the possibilities. So we have six out of eight of them. The probability that at most two is girls would be six eighths. Number five, two fair coins are tossed. Draw a tree diagram and use it to find the probability of landing on two heads. So the first flip 
you can get heads or tails. The second flip, you can get heads or tails. So the outcome, so I'm drawing my tree diagram and listing all my possibilities. Heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tails, tails. So what's the probability of it landing on two heads? That one right there, which is one out of four. So I drew a tree diagram. So make sure you're reading the directions carefully. If it says tree diagram, draw a tree diagram. If it says possibility dry bot diagram, do a possibility diagram. So a box contains three cards labeled A, B, and C respectively. Walter draws a card from the box at random. He then puts back the card into the box and draws a card randomly from the box again. Draw a tree diagram and use it to find the probability that he did not draw a card labeled C either time. So I have three possibilities. I have an A, a B, or a C. So this is my first draw. And yes, you can get an A, a B, or a C on your second draw. So this is the second draw, and yes, make sure you put headings on them. My outcomes, I have AA, AB, AC, BA, BB, BC, CA, CB, CC. Now I've got to ask my, answer my question. Draw a tree diagram and use it to find the probability that he did not draw a card labeled C. Well, there's one, AA, AB, can't choose AC because that has a C on it, BA, BB, can't choose BC, and I can't choose any of the ones that start with picking a C first. So there are a total of four out of nine possibilities, so the probability would be four ninths. Bag A contains one blue marble and three green marbles. Bag B contains three blue marbles and one green marble. Charlie randomly draws a marble from bag A and another one from bag B. So this is bag A. And it has one blue and three green. So four things to start with. And bag B is the exact opposite of this. It has four, three blues and one green. So it's going to be hard to get these all on here. Make sure you space them out. So I have three blues and one green. Three blues and one green three blues and one green. So all together there are 16 outcomes. And it says find the probability that the marbles are different colors. Are different colors? Wow, okay. So we have blue, 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 green. That one's a different color. And then Green, blue, green, blue, green, blue, green, green. So three there are different colors. And yes, I have three more green, blue combinations in this next branch. And then I have three more in the last branch. So I have all together 10 out of 16 that are different colors. And that's it for today.